Okay, I'm going to read this if I can. Okay, new school year, new frustration, yes. Uh, I received my daughter schedule and she is only in general education for enrichment, uh, which is glorified study hall and PE. Of course, we went the dreaded option of 79% to 40% in general education environment. Does that even meet the 40% minimum? I'll explain that in a second. I don't want to be unrealistic, but is, is my only option to force their hand to go 100% to 80% of the day in general ed? Also, her regular SPED teacher is on maternity leave. I know her substitute's name, but have no idea how to reach her. Is this normal? Am I being unreasonable to think I should have received an email? Um, no, you're not unreasonable to assume that uh, or, or want that or expect that. But let's go back and review least restrictive environment because that's what those uh, percentages are, okay? So in most of the states, they have the percentages um, because that's how the feds track least restrictive environment um, under child count. Uh, and so there's, in some states, there's more, but let's say in Alabama, and I know that this particular uh, uh, person is in Alabama because I've helped this family before. So, um, in Alabama, there's there's three main uh, least restrictive environment codes, uh, and that's how they're broken down. So let's say an O1 in Alabama would be 100% of the day to 80% of the day in the general education environment, all right, which means that the school can pull them out of the general education setting to provide related services um, and specialized instruction, meaning special education services. So 20%, a maximum of 20% of their day could be spent outside of the general education classroom. That's what that means. All right. So the next option, they skipped over O2. So O2 used to exist. So that would have been that next 20%, um, but they got rid of it and they just have an O3 now, which means 79% to 40%. So that's a much bigger range. Now we, we've got 40% that they can sit there and play with uh, between 79% and 40%. Now, what does that mean? That the child uh, will be in general education for 79% to 40% of their day, meaning that they could be removed from the that environment uh, anywhere from 21% to 60% of their day removed from the general education environment to work on special education and, and related services, speech language, OT, those kind of things. Okay, that is a huge range. Now for Down syndrome, for example, that, that, that O3 tends to be the killer. Uh, now, why is that? Because this, the, and, I, and I bring up Down syndrome because uh, in a, well, a lot of developmental disabilities. Um, because that's, that's the, the, that's the long road to eventual self-contained and I'm not knocking self-contained, my daughter self-contained, but that was a choice with my wife and I, uh, because that's the optimal environment for her to learn the skills that she requires. Uh, she, you know, we're not going to sit there and make her miserable to sit in general education class, uh, with, with, um, neurotypical peers and she, she gets no value from it whatsoever. Um, we find different avenues for the socialization with, with neurotypicals. But as far as instruction, that uh, was never our thing. So I don't want anybody to go, oh, it's, he's knocking self-contained. No, no, I'm not. Um, it's a good environment if it's done correctly, okay? But a lot of the times it's not done correctly and it's not a good environment for most kids. Um, it's, it's a babysitting service in, in many, many, many instances. The danger with an O3, meaning that range, that huge range between 79% and 40% is, is the details, okay? I like O3, it doesn't bother me, all right? I have many clients that are in O3, and in fact, I settle many cases to where that is the LRE. Now, what do I do to make it appropriate? I make sure that I am absolutely damn sure what that child is doing from the time he or she steps off that bus or gets out of the car line, until the child leaves. And I have it mapped down in 30 minute increments. I wanna know where the child is. I wanna know who's responsible for that child. And I know what, I wanna know what that child is doing. And I break it down, 30 minute increments, 30 minute increments, 30 minute increments. 
And I know that the school goes, well, that's ridiculous. Is it? Is it really? Because that is the only thing that allows me to have a snapshot of what they're doing with this child. And if they're really manipulating that O3, meaning that, that the child, because they, you, you can, they can sit there and say, well, your child's an O3. Well, what the hell does that mean? Where on that big percentage? Because if my child is 100% to 80%, I know that there's a 20% in there. And I think it's even smart to map that out. But for an O3, you got a 40% range. And your child can be in the general education setting for 42% and still be an O3. Whereas a lot of parents are deceived and they go, oh, I thought my child was in general education more. They told me my child was in general education more, but then when I map it out, I find out that it's less, but the parents had been deceived by, by having the school say, but your child's an O3, which is 79% to 40%. But if you leave it up to them to establish the schedule for your child, then do not be shocked, depending on the nature of your child's disability, if they're going to look at your child more as a 45 percenter as a 55 percenter instead of a 75 percenter which i don't have a problem with that and and quite frankly unless your child has maladaptive behaviors or behaviors that impede their learning and impact the learning of others i really don't understand why it takes more than 25 to 30 percent of the time outside of the outside of general education to accomplish what needs to be accomplished throughout a school day now do i have clients that are self-contained yes i do but in your particular situation, no, I don't see that. Now, so in your particular situation, because I know your child and I know your child's file, then at that point, what I have that I frequently see with children with developmental disabilities that don't necessarily have the behaviors that keep them out of general ed, then I have the entire argument for why they can't be in general education flipped, all right? It's now encased in love. It's now concern. It's now we just want the best for them. And that are the excuses for keeping them out of general education. They need more services. They need more intervention. We're working on social skills. Well, why the hell aren't you working on social skills where the general education kids are? Why would you be pulling a child out of the environment where social socialization occurs and put them in a self-contained environment where maladaptive social behavior is the norm? Or do you really want your developmentally disabled child uh, to, to be around problematic behavior? Because that, that, that is a lot in self-contained in environments. My daughter was one of them. So... So these are, and that's, that's where I see, I see these things to where we're going to sit there and work on social skills. And, and that's a push in service guys. And when I say push in service, that's a service you push into general education. Why in the hell would you pull them out to work on that? And also don't be lazy. If you're an educator, let's say if you're a speech language pathologist, let's say if you're, you know, a, a counselor, let's say find opportunities to work on social skills. And where would that be? Hmm, where would that, where? Oh, that's right. Recess, lunch. These are perfect opportunities where kids are allowed to interact with each other. So why when the hell wouldn't you do a push in service and, and plan your schedule of intervention around that child's interaction with neurotypical peers? Instead of using that in, as an excuse to remove, to remove, to remove, because that's easier. And you can sit there and, and encase it in love and say that, that we're, we're denying the child access. They're not going to say that they're denying the child access to general education out of love. They're not going to do that. I'm saying that. But they're going to use that as an excuse. And guys, that's not a free, appropriate public education. See, your child's entitled to, to a, a basic floor of opportunity. That's what FAPE is. Tangible progress according to your child's circumstances. And so with many of my clients, 
That's what we're fighting for. It's just a basic floor. Their child, the, their child services are down here. They suck. And, and I'm trying to get them up to here, to a basic floor. That's the majority of my cases. With many of my kids, especially with Down syndrome, developmental disabilities don't have behaviors. It flips. My entire argument flips. They'll let them in general ed, let them in general ed, and then the older the child gets, then all of a sudden, the school wants to give them more services and more services and more services and more services. See, the more services the child gets, then we're, miss we're messing with those LRE percentages, aren't we? That means the child's being removed from the general education setting for their services. But remember, this is a basic floor of opportunity. This is what your child's entitled to. When, you're, when they give your child more services and more services and more services, then they're giving your child more than what they are entitled to by law. Now, if you want that and you agree to it as a parent, great, do it. But if you're trying to maintain your child's placement in their proper setting, which is general education with access to the general curriculum, then no. You sit there and say, guys, I don't want all this stuff. And a lot of this stuff can be pushed into the general education setting where my child, that's my child's proper environment. Push the services in. Don't pull my child out. And you sit there and say, I'm not asking for a Cadillac because that's the word that is used in the Supreme Court cases, guys. That is a common word that we use in legalese in special education is that your child is entitled to a Chevy education. And in some states like Alabama, I've even had a hearing officer call it a serviceable Chevy, meaning a broken down piece of trash. Serviceable Chevy. <laughs> okay. I would like to think that your child's entitled to a new Chevy, at least. But what your child is not entitled to is a Cadillac, a Cadillac education. But yet with my Down syndrome, with other developmental disabled uh, um, or disability, um, and some of which includes autism, for example, without the behaviors, what I see is a school using the strategy of lopping on excessive services and then presenting it and it's really a Cadillac offering and your child is not entitled to a Cadillac. And that is your, it's a reverse argument to get your child back into the right amount of services. So an O3 for you would be appropriate, but what you would need to do is like I said, map out every aspect of your child's day in 30 minute increments. You need names, who is your child working with? What are they doing? What's the purpose behind it? If your child needs an aid, let's say targeted support, not an aid all day long, but let's say targeted support to be supported in general education, then next to the schedule and next to the teacher, then you need to write who would the aid is, wh who, what person is going to be responsible for your child for targeted support. The reason I mapped that out is something called accountability. You need to be aware of what the hell they're doing with your child all day if they have a 40% range to sit there and play with of whether your child's going to be in general education or not general education. And that's the only way you're ever going to know if your child is an O3 category. That's the only way you're going to know is to map out their day. And I'm talking Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday because it changes. Don't let them sucker you into just saying this is what the schedule is for one day. You need to have them write it out. And then once they write it out, they need to calculate the percentages for you so you understand where that percentage is. And at that point, you, said you, can, you, you can pinpoint at that point, where is your child on that percentage? And if your child is anywhere below, if your child is anywhere below a 70, 70% 70 of the day in general education, then, then you need to figure out why, because that's excessive. So your child should be in general education 70% of the day, in my viewpoint, based upon my understanding. Unless there's behaviors that have popped up that somehow, and if that's the case, then why the hell aren't, isn't the behavior analyst in there? And why isn't a, a, an aide uh, pushed in to try to make that or mitigate those behaviors to make that an appropriate setting? That would be my next question.
But if, it, if the behaviors aren't there, then what, what are we working on for that amount of time? Because if your child has a developmental disability, that there's, there's overkill on how much you present information to where it's not beneficial. The science says that. So then what's the purpose behind the removals from the general education environment? Map out the day. You're that, that's going to smoke them out real quick. And it's going to be very apparent. They can't hide. They can't hide if they map out the day, you see. You know, do it in a nice way, though. And just keep me updated. I'm very interested in this.